Hey guys, I'm just uh, wanted to take a minute to connect with um, you and set out a challenge before you. Um, I'm in my office, which is my car, because it's the only quiet place um, besides my bedroom, which is messy, and I don't want you to see my bedroom, so I'm calling you from my car. I'm videoing from my car. Anyways, um, <clears throat> we are heading into an amazing season. Even though everything is going crazy, guys, we're heading into a good season. We are heading into the Passover. Um, I want to give you a little background. Um, back in September, Chuck Pierce, the Lord, um, he's a prophet. The Lord gave him a word about a plague coming in 2020 and that the whole world would be in turmoil through Passover. And that's a pretty significant time, um, for the body of Christ, for Jewish people. It's, it's, it's one of the most important times of the year as we look back and we think about Jesus and the atonement and all the things that he did for us. Um, and, um, there's just been some stuff that the Lord stirred in my heart about Passover. And a lot of people have been talking about it. So um, in the the link, I hope when I get done with this, I'll put those in the link. Um, some sermons that go into more detail about the Passover. And um, hopefully I can put Chuck Pierce's um, um, prophecy in there and different things like that. But what I'm really feeling challenged is that as we head into Passover, that we began to seek the Lord, you know, that, that was something that as, as Jewish people, and we're not, I mean, most of us are not Jewish people, we're, we're Gentiles, you know, but there's still the things that God has spoken there that are prophetic acts that we can walk out in our life that, um, make a difference. And um, just a, a nutshell of the Passover, it was a time when the Egyptian, the Egyptians had the Israelites in slavery and the Lord had called them to let them to leave. And so they could be his people set apart and they refused to let them go. And in that time frame, there was a plagues and stuff that were sent trying to convince God was using those to try to convince Pharaoh to let them go. He would not. Um, and then the last plague was the plague where um, darkness would come and the firstborn male would die of every family and animals. And the Lord told the Israelites to get a specific type of lamb um, and to do certain things to prepare it. There was a certain amount of time. There was all these different things that they did to prepare. In a way, for us, that's like us preparing our hearts. You know, we're not going to obviously sacrifice a lamb anymore. That's just, I mean, Jesus paid the price. We don't have to do that anymore. It's done. It's our sins are forgiven. But unless we come to him and repent, we're still holding on to stuff. And um, as we're coming into this time Passover, what they would have done or what they did do at the time, they sacrificed the um, lamb. And there was all these regulations on how to do that. You can look that up yourself. It's in Exodus, um, Exodus 12. Yes, is the first Passover. And um, the Lord said, put the blood on the doorpost and the header basically of your home. And that will be a sign that when this spirit comes, that the, he will, it will pass over your home. Now that was a symbolic thing. There was nothing special necessarily about this lamb's blood, except for that it was the representation of atonement. It was a representation of that, um, being cleansed, being purified. Um, so they did that. And whoever did that, um, the spirit passed over them and their families were safe. Again, later we see 40 years later, um, we see Joshua sends two spies in to check out Jericho and Jericho is a big city that, that, that God had said was going to be the Israelites city. And he, um, sent them in to check it out. Well, there was this lady, um, that hid them. Her name was Rahab and she hid the Israelite spies there were two of them <clears throat> in her home and he's the the city came and they were like hey we know these guys are here you need to like give them back to us um we're gonna punish them because we know they're coming to kill us and she's like no i don't have them i don't have them so she hides them and um when she gets done she goes up to see them um in the evening and she says to them because i've shown you this kindness I asked that you would show kindness to my family as when you come to invade the land that you would um, be kind to my family. And um, he 
they she they said we need a sign that you're going to be committed to not telling what we're doing because like if you do we're not going to you know honor this there's different things um and they grab a scarlet cord and they said hang this in the window and then when we come to take the city we will see the scarlet cord in the window and know that that's your home and you will be safe now the walls of jericho fall down i do not understand how her house like obviously how did her house stay okay i don't know it's just how God does things. He's crazy cool. But um, the scarlet cord is like a representation back to the Passover. It was a scarlet cord in her window showing her commitment to the Israelites, her commitment in a way to God. But she wasn't a, a Jew, so she wouldn't have done the whole sacrifice and the blood and all that. Here they are 40 years later and like, let's do this, you know, in a sense. Put it in your window, put a cord. And she did and they honored that and she was safe. Um, and they, they're, I'm feeling like, you know, as we're going into this season of Passover and we are dealing with a pandemic, let's do as a family, um, do it with your family. We're going to do it with our family. We're going to take time together to, um, pray, to read about the Passover. And we're going to hang a scarlet or red ribbon on our door it doesn't have to be fancy it shouldn't be fancy just something in your house you know if you just got red you know like i have just ribbon you know i got it from the dollar store at christmas time you know it doesn't it's not supposed to be fancy it's not I mean, this is not a, a show this is saying god we're going to commit ourselves to you um there's a verse that i'm gonna come back to this in just a second i want to just say there's a verse in the bible that we love to quote and it says that um this, the part we love to quote is, if my people who are called by name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. That is an amazing verse in Chronicles. Before that, it talks about how there's plagues come. There's things that have come in the earth and that if peop, if God's people will pray and they will humble themselves this is not talking about the world humbling themselves it's talking about the body of christ humbling themselves before the lord and saying god search my heart where are there the things that are wrong in me any compromise is wrong okay it, it, it might be little things there are, we are all growing we're all growing it's not anyone's sin isn't and you know like we go oh well i'm not that bad you know i just overeat or i just do this or i i just whatever i don't know you know, we have these things that we are convinced are okay. God made the rules. He made the earth. He made it all. So we can't say, oh, well, you know, I don't want to do it your way. You're living on his planet. This is the way things go. And in that, we can, as the body of Christ, repent for ourselves and seek the Lord for ourselves. And then after we have set our hearts before the Lord and we've repented, then we repent on behalf of our city, our families, our nation, and the world. In, um, let's see, it was in number 16. There's a really interesting passage where there was um, some conflict happening and there were some people that were crying out against, the, the, against Moses and Aaron and the Lord had had enough. He's like, I'm done, you know, and um, he sent out a plague and um, it's a long story. You guys can read it. Um, but it's, what's interesting to me is it says Aaron lit. Let's see. Wait, I'm sorry. Moses told Aaron to grab the incense, run out, light them and walk among the people and bring, make them holy. God was angry with this hard hearted people and tired of the whatever was going on and so then but Moses and Aaron had a heart for the foolishness I mean the foolish people he loved them they loved them and they and so did God you know and that's why he put them in leadership over them my cat is walking on my window <laughs> I'm sorry it's so funny I'll just turn it for a second you guys I think he wants in the car okay so dumb cat anyways okay so Aaron goes out with this incense bowl hey my it's my life guys it's my life um incense bowl and he stands between it says he stands between the plague and the people 
And the incense represent the prayers of the saints. When you look in Revelation, in the book of Revelation 5, 8, it says this. Now when the Lord, I'm sorry, now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and 24 elders fell before the lamb. The lamb is Jesus. Okay. Each having a harp, each who? The four living beings. Okay. That were always in the presence of God. They are always in the presence of God crying, holy, holy, holy. That's what they do. That's they, they stay there. They had a harp in one hand and a golden bowl full of incense. Here's the interesting part. Full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So these living beings, these angels that are in heaven, standing in the presence of God, crying, holy, 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 have bowls that are incense and they're filled with your prayers. You think your prayers aren't important? You think that they're not powerful? They're what are filling the incense bowls in heaven before the Father. You are heard. You are important. And you praying in this season is very, very important. So I want to encourage you. You this is important and you are a part of it. You know, you can't just say, oh, well, Pastor Terry will pray or Pastor Della will pray. Yeah, we're going to pray, but our prayers aren't any more powerful than yours. Okay, you can do this. Um, back to the ribbon. I want us to, um, and anybody that wants to join, you know, doing it, pray about it. Um, put a red ribbon over your door. Anything. You're like, Della, I don't have red ribbon. Okay. You paper whatever you can do do it now is there any magic in this red ribbon no there's nothing there's nothing in the red ribbon it's not magical it's not a potion it's not a thing it's not like oh that's going to be the thing and every you know all the enemies and it's going to come up and see my red ribbon and be like oh no there's a red ribbon on Dell's door no it is the prophetic act that's what it is there's nothing special about the ribbon it's just ribbon the point is we're saying I'm God's kid and he takes care of me and I've said no more. This is my line. And I would encourage you, if you own a business, put one on your business door. Declare that the presence of God is in your business, that sickness can't enter and that those people that enter your business, sickness comes away from them. It leaves their body. We have to be carriers of this light. We already are. We just don't realize it. We have to give it away um, to those around us. So, um, pray and I would encourage you to put a red ribbon on your door. Um, and also like, I just put like, I made like this little thing like this. Okay. I'm going to put one in my car. Why? Because it's going to remind me that everywhere I go, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Everywhere I go, he is with me. And everywhere I go, I can pray for people for healing. I don't have to be afraid. I am not saying be stupid. I am not saying I'm going to go out and hug somebody and be like, hey, let me like get your germs. I'm not saying that. We are wise. Okay. I believe in faith, but I still brush my teeth and floss to not get cavities. Okay. <laughs> there is practical things in life. But what I'm saying is we have to trust that we have a, a bigger power inside of us. We have to believe. We have to be the ones that say, you know what? I'm going to go into this place and I'm going to bring life. Um, and just a word to families, if you feel like, I know a lot of parents say like, I don't know how to teach my kids. I don't know if they'll even listen to me. You know, you can, you can teach them. I know a lot of people are used to, you know, you send your kids to, to youth group, you send your kids to children's church and that's where they learn about God. And now you're stuck at home. Now you gotta, they gotta learn about God from somebody. Well, you're the one, you know, it said in the Bible, to while you walk with your children, where you go, whatever you're doing to teach them the ways of the Lord. If you feel totally like I have no idea where to start, Della, that's okay. There are devotionals out there. There are lessons out there. You can simply start out by saying to your kids, I don't know what we're doing. I'm just going to learn along with you. That's what we do. You know, I just walk along with my kids. I don't think I know all the answers. I tell them I don't know the answers. I tell them, hey, let's find them. Let's seek the Lord. Let's read the Bible together. And if you, they have an answer, a question that you can't answer, that's okay. You can tell them that you don't know what the answer is yet. And then you can find out later. Anyways, I want to encourage you as families to, as a group, to pray over your home, to read about the Passover, to understand what it is, 
and then to tie a ribbon on your door, maybe put one on your office door, um, and to set your hearts aside, like to put yourselves aside right now as we head into Passover and Easter. Um, Passover will be this Friday. And if you're interested in doing like a Passover meal, um, I'm going to also get some information about that. Yeah, we're not Jewish. We don't need to do a Passover meal anymore. But it's a symbolic act that if you want to do it and you want to teach your kids, we can do that. And we can put our hearts before the Lord and know that our forgiveness is in Jesus Christ. Our All of our being is in Jesus Christ. If you don't know the Lord, you need to seek his face and the simple truth is he came and he died on the cross for you to forgive your sins and all you have to do is to pray simply a prayer that basically says god would you forgive my sins i want you to come into my life and be my lord and then ask someone you know hey where do i start all right because today's the best day to start um i think that's all the stuff i have for you guys um, be sure to, um, look for those links. If I don't have them in this, um, I'll post them in the, um, family group on Facebook. And if somebody that's not on Facebook, you can just message me, um, and I'll get those to you. Um, let's see. I'm going to pray real quick. Okay. And then I'm gonna let you guys go. God, would you just bless us? Help us to have our hearts set before you, God. <sighs> God, I ask right now that you would give people the ability to hear your voice, that you give them the gift of hearing and the ability to seek your face and that they would know that you're close to them in this hard season. Give them hope, Lord. Give them faith and comfort. And Lord, each word that I've spoken today that um, that is not from you, then I ask that you would just cause those not to be remembered, but the ones that are you, that um, hearts would be open to receive what you're saying and that you would cause it to go out into the earth and to make a difference. Would you bless each household? In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Talk to you later.